How many can stand some mercy today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Good to be in the Lord's house. Good to worship Him. Good to be with good friends and fellow worshipers and lovers of the Lord. How many of you like to wait? How many husbands can I see? <laughs> you got to wait on a woman. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So you got to, you to learn to love and to wait. Right. I don't know why, but for some reason, the Lord likes for us to wait. To wait. So I know, Lord, I want it like yesterday. Right. I need this and I need it yesterday. He says, wait. Wait. The scripture declares in Isaiah, the day that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He shall mount up with wings as eagles. You're going to run and not be weary. You're going to walk and not faint. But you have to learn. Learn. Learn to wait.
50th year. A couple weeks ago, not a couple weeks ago, uh, y'all know I've been kind of having a bum knee, and she would then kick it and put it in pain for me. Uh -huh. I, I went to the doctor, and they, they began to look at it. And they wanted to do this and do that. I said, well, just give me a shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give me a shot. Cortisol. In the knee. In the knee. So I'm a man. And you know man can handle things? No. You know, you know how to handle it. No. No. I'm not afraid of a needle that hits my skin. We were in there and I laid. A lady, I was talking to the doctor and I said, well, I've been taking some Aleve and it's been helping me. He said, well, I can give you some heroin and it'll help you too, but it ain't going to fix it. <laughs> I said, this is not good, this is not good right now, you know? So anyway, I said, he said, well, let's do an MRI. And I said, no, nah, let's just go ahead and get the shot because, you know, real men can handle all things. Right. So I get laying on the bed and I get a little nervous. Have you ever, have you ever just been, man, you know what I'm talking about with a needle? Drive a nail through my finger, I'm okay, but a needle is not a fun thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> I broke out in a cold sweat. <laughs> I had my hands back like this, and Sheila said she thought I was going to pass out before the needle ever hit me. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you now, I got the needle. Uh -huh. He sprayed something on it. He told me, he said, he give 65 shots a week, never lost anybody. Uh -huh. but he, he, he sprayed something cold on my knee. And all of a sudden, that, I felt that prick. I said, well, that's not bad. And then all of a sudden, I felt it hit the muscle. Woo! Mm -hmm. But real men, we didn't cry. Right. <laughs> you know, sometimes, it's okay to cry, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't cry for that. <laughs> sometimes, it's okay. And I know that sometimes, we have a hard time of it of just men especially letting go and letting God bless us sometimes. Amen. Women, they can cry at the drop of a hat. Yeah. I, I watch movies with Sheila and tears just running down her eyes. I'm looking at her like, what in this world? She said, you don't feel it. No, I don't feel it. <laughs> but you know what? I was talking to the Lord the other day. And I was telling him, I, I've asked him to give me greater compassion. Give me, give me more than right let some tears begin to flow. Because sometimes I think that us big men, or we think we're big, and we get to the point that we've got it. And just allow God to bless us. So I'm kind of leading me to, are we trusting God in our lives? Do we truly trust Him? Or do we operate through our personal abilities. And as long as things are working right, we say God is doing good, but when things don't work right, we get all upset, aggravated, and frustrated. Let me move on. In Psalms, the 119th chapter, I think I'll just read it from up here, 41st to the, through the uh, 48th verse. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me. For I trust in thy word, and take not thy word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hope in thy judgment. So shall I keep thy law continuously forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies, also before kings, and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. The difference of God's true works, work in our life, is amazing. The difference is that when God works in our life, how amazing it is. Religious people are not very impressive to the world and are really not very impressive to themselves. When God does His work in our hearts, that is, a great, that is the greatest possible experience we can enjoy. And what I mean by religious people, people that think that they got it. 
They're, they walk with that air about them. And I'm just so religious. And they're trying to impress others, but really they're not even impressing themselves. So when I begin to put this message together, how are we trusting God? I don't know why, Gary, I think I'm going to have to preach a message on that Bible study about the water, the Holy Spirit. I keep going back to that Bible study that we had and how back in the back we just talked about it and went with it and, and talked about the water and, and talked about where we need to be with God. Because everybody don't want to be in ankle deep water. They don't want to be in water to the loins. They think if I can get out there in the water that where the currents just take me anywhere, man, i got to be spiritual. That means I've got there. I have arrived because I'm just allowing God to do what He wants to do in my life. I got thinking this week that I've been fishing. And I've been fishing on the banks. I've been in ankle deep water and I caught big fish. I've been out in water up to my loins and I caught big fish. And I've been out in water over my head. Of course, I was in a boat. And I've caught big fish. And I come to find out that when we begin to think that we're religious, we might be missing really what God has for us. Because if we're not careful, we get high-minded. And we get to a point of where we're really not trusting God, but we're trusting our own abilities. Amen. And the reason I talked about a little bit of me getting that shot, in the beginning, this is how I deal with pain. I punish pain for hurting me. Yeah. I really do. If I hurt something, I just keep on going because I think if I punish it, it'll get better. Mm -hmm. But the older I get, I find out we do not heal that quickly. Amen. So I have to put trust in somebody to maybe help me. And I gotta learn how to trust God and be more where God wants me to be. So in verse 21, the scripture says this, Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation, according to thy word. Now the first thing is to be sure what you've got is what God gives. Amen? Amen. Isn't that amazing? We've got to know that what we've got is what God has given us. So if I know that, that I'm a child of God and I study His word and, and the blessings I have, I know they come from God. Amen. Somebody asked me the other night in the Bible study, we was teaching on... Uh, one of the messages that I, I preach, why do we settle for less? Somebody said, how do you get to a point that where you're blessed and you enjoy the blessings that you have? And, yet, and, and you know how, how I get to that point? I get excited when somebody else gets blessed. If you get something new, I'm excited for you. I'm happy for you. I'm not jealous over you. Now, some people get mad. When somebody gets jealous and gets something new, they get jealous. I don't get jealous over you because I don't want your blessings because your blessing won't work for me. Amen. I want the blessings that God has got for me. And when I come to that point of understanding that, hey, I'm trusting God in my life, but everything He gives me, that's for me. Mm -hmm. So when I can get to that point and begin to get humble and say, Lord, I thank you. I might not have everything that I want, but I have everything that I need. Amen. Yeah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise because you got it to thank you for me today. So the first thing is to be sure what you've got is what God gives. Paul told us to test ourselves to see if we were in the faith. To make sure, hey, we, we are where we need to be. Verse 42 says, So shall I have with wherewith to answer him that reproaches me, for I trust in thy word. So I guess, what is your answer when the world scrutinizes your so-called relationship with God? Somebody said to me one time, said, you godly people, where is your God when you need him? If God was so much love, why does he allow all this to happen? Why don't we go through the trials and tribulations of life and God loves us? Why don't he just love us? We don't have to worry about nothing. And you know, I understand what they're saying, but at the same time, the way they're saying it is wrong. God loves us. But it doesn't mean we won't go through some trials and tribulations in our life. Amen? Right, right. The Bible says that it, it rains on the just and unjust alike. If I didn't go through something, I wouldn't know how to get through it. Amen. I don't understand a lot of things that happens. 
And it's not my place, but I know God is the final judge of all things. So when somebody starts scrutinizing me and wanting me to, to get all excited and get emotional and argue with them about God, I don't have to. Because God is God, amen? amen. God is my Savior. He's the one that sent His Son to die on the cross that I might have life. Amen. Wow. We celebrated that last week. Of Jesus dying on the cross and rising, raising from the dead. So I don't have to defend God because the Word itself will take care of it. So when somebody comes to me sometimes, so, well, why is your God allowed this? Or why is your God allowed that? I said, why don't you just ask Him? Why don't you get to know Him? I don't have to defend Him. He's God. You know, if I wanted to get critical, God, why is my knee hurt? God, why am I losing my hair? God, why did all the steel you gave me up here fell down? It melted. That's my story, it's melted steel. <laughs> hey, you didn't like that, don't you? It melted steel, yeah, that's it. She even told me to get it, get it tempered again. <laughs> I mean, we can find reasons to ask God why this and why that, but I've come to the understanding that if I'm going to trust God, I'm going to accept things that happen in my life knowing that God is going to bless me no matter what. Amen? That I am going to go through some trials in my life just so I can be able to grow. So, I have four things I want to talk about and how that we know that we are trusting God. So, one, number one is the way we wait. Now, first, verse 43 says, And take not the word of truth utterly out of thy mouth, for I have hope and judgment. So I guess my question today is, how do we wait on God? Do we wait in a prayerful state that where we just trust God for all things? And say, God, I know you're going to guide me the right way. So, maybe I can even ask this question. What words come out of our mouth as we wait for God's timing? Is it doubt? Is it bitterness? Is it anger? Think about that for a moment. How do I wait on God? When, when, when something is not, we don't, I don't understand something, and everything, or maybe chaos is in my life, how do I wait? Do I wait with doubt? Bitterness? Anger? Wow. What kind of words come out of your mouth when things is not just right in your life? Ooh, that's a tough one, isn't it? Preacher, you don't want to hear what comes out of my mouth. No, I probably don't. Jesus don't either. But sometimes we get so frustrated because everything is not the way we think it ought to be. Amen. And when it gets that way, we get emotional. You see, I'm a fleshly person. And my emotions can fly quick. Can yours? Yeah. Everybody? Yeah. Come on, we're trying to go to heaven, folks. Here. We, we want to make sure we're right. You can even do this if you want to. That means you're bound to me. It just means you're in, you're in the boot. But, and then all of a sudden, I'm not careful. My anger can come up, and then bitterness can creep in to my life. But if I get to the point that I'm careful what comes out of my mouth, and I say, Lord, I don't understand this right now, but I know that you're going to help me to get through it, you know what's going to happen? I'm not going to get emotional. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to have bitterness because I've already said, God, I don't understand it, but I know that you're going to help me get through it. And eventually, I will get through it. Yeah. So I think sometimes we have to be careful what comes, what we speak. Because... Really, what we speak is who we are or what we might become if we're not careful. So, one way is to wait upon the Lord. What would you have said if you were to know a pound of the nails in that ark? For the Lord had promised you, rain's coming, the flood's coming, you've got to build this ark. And he's out there building it and everybody's laughing at him and telling him he's crazy and he, he's all messed up and he must have been on something. But he just kept pounding those nails. Yes. How about when Joseph was in prison behind those bars? Uh -huh. Knowing that God was going to take care of him, but he didn't know how and when. Right. The critical 
situation is like, how, how would we have responded? Would we keep on? Would we wait upon the Lord to watch what God does in our lives? <laughs> Waiting is very hard for me. I'm a person I want it done right now. I want it over with so I can start something else. I don't like having four or five projects going on at one time. I want one thing, get it done, and move to something else. That's just how I am. Sometimes I get impatient. And sometimes when things get to a point that I, I can't control it, I have to get on my knees and ask God to give me strength to accept what is and let Him help me to work through it. Instead of getting emotional and getting upset and frustrated. So if I learn to wait upon the Lord, I can do good. But when we look at Noah and Joseph, they were all inspired, they were all inspired faith in spite, they all had a, a faith inspired in spite of their circumstances. They knew that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. Their circumstances said no, but they knew and understood. Proper waiting brings a greater capacity for service for the Lord. In other words, if I learn how to wait on God, I will be blessed much greater than what I would be if I didn't wait upon the Lord. Amen? Amen. So when I, when I get to thinking about all these things that, that goes on in my life, i got to slow down and wait. You know what I like about North Carolina? When you go back up to North Carolina in the little town that we're from, they don't get in a hurry for nothing. They just kind of lay back and take it easy. And, and you go talk to them and say, well, when are you going to get that done? I'll get to it tomorrow, no big hurry. And I'm sitting here, well, man, I'd have a hurry. I'd want it done right now. Oh, I don't get no hurry. Life is too short. Uh. You know what? If we could do that with the Lord and say, you know what, God? I'm just going to slow down. I'm going to wait. I'm going to watch what you're going to do in my life. And when I, when I see what you're doing in my life, I'm going to be so blessed and so happy that I waited upon you. When I, when I was young, and when I was really young, probably from 12 years old to 15, how many of you ever had puppy love? Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Everybody say, yeah. yeah. Be with me a little bit. Help me here a little bit. <laughs> and you go, you go to school, you know, you're growing up, and your life is changing, and you're coming out of that little kid, and you're becoming this little whatever you are at that age, I don't know. And you see this pretty girl, or, and, and you girls see these handsome guys or whatever, and all of a sudden, I'm good. Uh -huh. And she wants to hold your hand, you walk in the hallway holding hands, and you think, I'm ready to marry that one. Uh -huh. I want to be hurt with her for the rest of my life, or vice versa. And then all of a sudden, you don't like her no more. Because uh -huh. somebody else came by that just caught your eye. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They can't. He knows what I'm saying. And then all of a sudden, that's the one. Yeah. That's the one. But when the true one comes by and catch your eye, and you spend the rest of your life with that person because you love them, through the tough times, through the good times, through all times, then you know you've got the right one. Amen. Lord. Sometimes I ask the Lord, Lord, I want so much. But the Lord said, just wait. That's not what I want you to have. That's not the one I want you to, to be with. Right. No, I got, I got something. I got someone so much better for you. And you start waiting and you get saying, well, Lord, let me help you out here. I got you a whole bunch of that I could have. <laughs> yeah, you know I got things. Look at y'all guys act like y'all innocent. <laughs> Better that way. It's safer. That's true. <laughs> and, and all you girls, y'all got nothing in God. I don't know how girls do it, so I'm not going to get there. <laughs> not at all. But boy, when the right one comes into your life, you knew. When she came into my life, I knew from that moment that I was her Tarzan and she was my Jane. <laughs> It works for me. But you gotta understand. You gotta understand. When we met, I was swinging from a tree on a rope. 
<laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> she still called me Tarzan now, but not really. <laughs> but when the right one comes, you know. See, if God would allow me to have someone before, it wouldn't have worked. Right. But when the right one came, you see, by waiting upon the Lord, God does the right thing in your life. Amen? That's right. In almost 42 years, almost 44 years together, isn't that amazing? That's amazing. So we have to wait upon the Lord and let God. i got to hurry here. The way we walk. Verse 44, the second one. So, Verse 44 and 45. So shall I keep thy law continuously forever and ever, and I will walk at liberty, and I will seek thy precepts. Walking is not just meant to be just moving and doing nothing. Walking means that we're doing something for the Lord. And how we walk in our lives, and how we carry ourselves, and what people see. Someone said to me the other day, I really don't care what people think about me, but you know what I do? You know what I do? Because I walk down and see Jesus in me. Amen? Amen? Yes. You see, I can walk to her. The crazy walks, I guess. Uh -huh. She told me I walk like Fred Sanford anymore with this knee. Uh -huh. <laughs> I get up in the morning, it's like this right here. <laughs> but walking for the Lord, that means when people see me walking, I am walking in the right direction, doing the right things that God wants me to do. And that's what God wants us to do. And so when we get to that point, people look at us and say, you know what? There is something special about that individual. There is something special there. And what they got, I want. And you know what we can give them? We can give them Jesus. Amen? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We've got to learn how to walk. And how to walk in the Spirit. And how to Allow God to bless us in our walk. See, if I learn to wait, I'm going to walk right. If I'm waiting on the Lord, I'm going to be, be walking right. So if I'm walking right, that means I'm moving, but I am moving in the right direction that God wants me to move. And then I'll be have continuous obedience without interruption. In other words, I'm not going to allow things to get in my life that will destroy the things that God has for me. You know, it's amazing when I talk with people. People tell me a lot of times that I wish I was just more blessed. I wish I just had a little bit more. Man, if I had this, look what I could do for God. Someone told me if I won the lottery, I give my stuff to God, and, and I could look what I could do for the ministry. And I turned around and told that person, I said, Yeah, you'd be here, you'd be there, you'd be everywhere. That's the reason why we don't get it. Because we probably couldn't handle it. That's right. Amen? Yes. And so if we're walking to look to get it that way, it's the wrong way. But if we're walking with God, God gives us everything that we have need of. Amen. So we've got to walk in the Spirit. See, I want to get to the point that I'm walking with God wherever He's at, and when He turns, I turn. When He stops, I stop. When He moves, I move. I want to be in tune with God and step with God that I know what He wants me to do. Amen. So, so when I can do that, continuously obedient without interruption. In other words, I'm going to be obedient to the Lord. Now, I know I'm not there, but boy, I am so striving for that. I am striving to get closer and to closer with Him. And then the third thing is the way we witness. Oh, that's a good one. Verse 46 says, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. Now, let's read that. Let's read that again. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. Amen. I can name off some people. Who does this verse remind you of in the Bible? Paul, Daniel, Nehemiah, Joseph, Esther. We could just go on with some of the people. They're not ashamed. Remember when Daniel was not ashamed? He was thrown in the lion's den. Okay. Remember when the three Hebrew children, they stood up and they witnessed they were thrown into the fiery furnace? They weren't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They stood up for who God is, who God was. So who do you see in our daily life? Willing to tell it like it is? Willing to take a stand? Regardless of the cost? So I guess the question we ask, what is our testimony? What have we done? We go to church. Or live a respectable life? Or what has God done in your life? 
that you can share with someone else. Let me tell you what God does in my life every day. When I wake up in the morning, He allows my eyes to open. Amen. When I get up, He allows me to breathe. He has given me the health. And I have been blessed to have good health all my life. I've never had an operation, except T, never had an operation in my life. They say, knock on wood. I don't know how that goes, but I just don't have to knock. I see somebody knocking on their head, husband's head. <laughs> but I have been blessed. And, and, and maybe the reason I haven't had an operation is because I'm scared of the needle. I don't know. I've been. But I have been blessed. I've had good health my whole life. So I can share to someone, you know what? God has kept a great hand upon me. Not only that, He's anointed me to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. What else could I ask for? Yeah. Wow. He's anointed me to be a minister, to share this good news, but He's anointed each and every one of us to be able to share the good news. You might not be up here, but boy, you can touch so many people around your life in your life that you can guide them and direct them to who God is. Because listen, there is something fantastic about serving Jesus, isn't it? Amen. Amen. You know the little, the little clips we give in the morning, the funny stuff we try to bring out to get you laughing to enjoy life? You know what? I think God laughs right there with us. Amen? Amen. I think God enjoys a good joke, a good funny joke, a good clean one though. Amen. I think God enjoys when we're happy and we're rejoicing and we're praising Him. And I don't think God expects us to walk around like this all day long either because then it becomes too religious and it's about what we're doing and not about what we're doing for Him. Amen. I think what God wants to do is live our life the best that we can live for Him. So let's get back to the water a little bit. For some people, never going to get out of ankle deep because they're scared of the water. They're scared to get too deep. There's some people never going to get past their lawns because they just can't swim. But you know what? If they're casting their nets or casting their rods on the banks and telling people about Jesus, they're walking with the Lord. Amen? Amen. They're doing the things that God wants them to do. And they're being a witness for the Lord because they are in the water telling somebody about who Jesus is. And the water represents the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when we begin to see these things happen and our witness God becomes so strong and so powerful. People is going to want to say, I want some of that. The other day, Sheila and Billy Ann, they went to the hospital for me. I just couldn't get to the hospital. Judy's in the hospital. And we need to continue to pray for her and Candy. Candy had surgery uh, Thursday, I think it was. And uh, she they had to put her in ICU this morning. She has uh, got pneumonia, so do keep her in your prayers. Uh, but she, they went to see Judy real quick for me at the hospital, just couldn't make it. And they walked in and they got talking to Judy about God, and all of a sudden, a little lady decided they want to talk about Jesus. Oh. See, you see, that, that, that's what happens when you begin to witness and, and tell people about who God is. Other people are getting interested. Amen? How many are interested in Jesus today? Amen. Come on, are you interested in Jesus today? Come on. Come on. Come on. Give money. We don't get that. But 
there are many things that we get excited about that makes us excited. But let me ask you a question. Where is knowing God, knowing God's will on that list? Think about it. I always get excited when families get together or I get excited when we're going to take a trip. I like getting ready to take a trip. And I like getting in that Getting, getting on the road and just traveling and just getting away. I enjoy that. I hate coming home because when we come home, i got to unload everything. <laughs> but I get excited when we get ready to go on a trip. But where's God at in that excitement? Where's God at when we get, get excited about our NFL football game? Nothing wrong watching football, please. That's not what I'm saying. Right. But do we get that kind of excited for God? Now, I know when the buck scores a touchdown, I get excited for them that very often. <laughs> I did really get excited. I said, they did it? But you know what? I get excited when God just touches me and blesses me. And I say, thank you, Jesus. How about you? Amen. I get excited when I know that God is doing something in my life. So here, here's the thing that I, I think that would maybe sum some of this up. If I know where God is at on that list, that means I'm going to be delighted in Him. I am going to have an intense emotion towards worshiping Him and praising Him. I want to use that word intense because when it's always intense with God because He does so much for me. And I can't explain everything. But I can explain one thing. Just knowing that God lives inside of me, it, it just gives me all the strength in the world that I need. That's what I mean by intense. I'm excited about God in me. And how He blesses me. And I just don't want to worship Him just at church, folks. I've seen a lot of that. People come to church and they get excited because they, they, they feel the presence of God and God is just blessing and God is just touching people. But boy, when they leave, these buildings, they leave this building, all of a sudden, it's like the light turns off. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of go back into their little world. I got, I got a little confused with that one time. And I kept asking the Lord, I said, Lord, I, I'm not understanding this. I see people in the house of God raising their hands and praising you and doing this and doing that, and then they go outside and they want to argue with someone. Mm -hmm. I said, God, I can't stand it. I don't even know what to do about it. And, and some of you remember God told me to start preaching about being real. When I started preaching about being real, about two weeks had about 50 people exit us. Because they, they weren't getting that big hype that they were looking for. And man, I was just perplexed. Couldn't understand what was happening. I was saying, Lord, did, did, did I goof this thing up? And I, I know I shared with you, I turned the TV on about 3 o'clock in the morning, Creflo Dollar, Dollar was speaking, and he was going through the same thing. You know what he said to me? What, what he said, God used him to say to me because I needed it. He said, there's a lot of people that go to church. He said, they're seeking something that they just don't have anywhere else. And they'll go and sit beside someone that is full of the Holy Spirit. In other words, that God is in their life. And they'll feel that presence of God and that good feeling, that euphoria right there beside them. And they get excited about that. And they think, man, I've arrived. But they leave the building. Never changing their lives. Expecting it to continue to happen. That's the reason they run from one place to another trying to find that ultimate high. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you how to find the ultimate high. Have that intense relationship with Jesus Christ. He lives in you. And he will help you every day. And he'll give you what you need. And you don't have to go hunting him. He's right there. Amen? Amen. He's in my truck with me. He's in my home with me. He's wherever I'm at. God is with me. I can feel that intense Amen. presence of God there. Yes. And then when I begin to understand that, and I kind of came to the conclusion that you know what? We gotta teach people how to live. We gotta teach people, we taught them how to shout and jump and do this and do that. We gotta teach them how to live. It was amazing. We were 
yesterday at, at the family reunion, and well, not a family reunion, but she was mom's 80th birthday. We celebrate that, and also Henry, he turned 80. And we just celebrate life. We got talking, David and I did, about some of these things. And one of my nieces, she looked at me and she said, you know what, you're right. We never really have been taught how to live. We just was taught how to get by. And I thought about that for a little bit. And I thought about, you know what? What is this service? And I look at me, I look at me personally, there's nothing wrong with it. Listen, please understand, there's nothing wrong with the power of God takes over in a service. Matter of fact, He wants to do it right now. He can move me out of the way and take over. I'm satisfied. Amen. Amen. I, I want that to happen. Right. It'd be amazing coming to church one day and all of us get together. None of us can do nothing. We just sit there and amaze what God is doing in our lives. Amen. Amen. But when I come to church, I want to be the same person I am in church when I go outside. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So the way we worship is the way things happen. So I guess, how are we trusting God? Am I trusting God for everything? You see, someone said to me about my knee. you got to understand, I go through it as a pastor. I believe in divine healing. I do. Uh -huh. They said, well, why can't you trust God for your healing? I said, I do. Or why didn't God heal your knee? I said, he's going to. He said, by a doctor? I said, I don't care if he uses a doctor or not. At least he gets healed, he's healed. Uh -huh. Amen. Come on. Because God didn't give that man the technology to do it, it wouldn't happen. Amen. That's right. I said to think sometimes, Instead of trying to find the things that's not happening in our lives, why don't we look at the good things that are happening? And let me finish it up with this. Everybody just kind of, if you will, touch yourself. You can do the other side. I didn't know if you could do it, but I thought I'd try. Think about this. You are uniquely made. God made you exactly who He wanted you to be. That's right. You are good. Yes. Matter of fact, God said when He made man, you, He did something very, very good. Amen? Yeah. He made us and He was excited in who He made. You see, I don't want to look like Kenny. <laughs> And you know what I said. And I don't want to act like Kenny. No. That's true. But I don't want Kenny to look like me. No. <laughs> because God didn't make me to be Kenny, He made me to be Larry. Amen? And He didn't make Larry to be. Yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> I know I'm going to twist out with that real quick. But he made us unique. Yes. He made us exactly who he wanted us to be. That's right. So be happy with who you are. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, I love who I am. I love That's who all I right am. That's all right. Come on. I love who I am. Because the Bible says if you can't love a brother, no, there ain't no one. Love your neighbor as you love thyself. If you can't love yourself, how can you love anybody else? Amen. So say, I love me. I love me. And God made you perfect in his eyes. Amen. You're exactly who God wants you to be. We're all different. We all see things a little different. And that's okay. But most of all, that we know who Jesus is in our lives. Amen. Every one of us has got blessings that we don't even realize is waiting on us. You might be going through something today. You might not understand it. But let me tell you something. If you wait upon the Lord, amen? That's right. If you will wait upon Him and let Him help you, great things are going to happen in your life. That's right. Something big is about to happen in your life. But you've got to be patient, amen? Right. God is fixing to do something good in all of our lives. Amen. But we've got to just be patient and watch what He does. Could you just stand with me for a few minutes? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint.
faint. But as we wait upon the Lord, watch what God will do in our life. Come here, Ken. I can take on him because of my nephew. He's not going to get mad at me. Now watch this. Watch this. You play soft. If I wait, Kenny's got battles in his life. I've got battles in my life. Judy's got battles in her life, and we can just go on and go on. I can't fix the things in his life. Nor can he fix the things in my life. But I can pray for God to give him strength to wait upon the Lord. Amen. And he can pray for, for me the same way. And when we begin to pray one for another and begin to ask God to help us, things begin to work in our life. You see, I'm under the understanding there's greater days ahead of me than what's behind me. Amen. God's got something good for me. Amen? That's right. And he's got something good for you. That's right. But we got to wait we got to be patient. we got to listen. Sometimes we just got to be still. Now, I'm in it once again. I told you, I'm always in a hurry. i got this to do, that to do, and this to do, and that to do. But the Lord is telling me, slow down. Just slow down. Mm -hmm. And be patient. And watch what He does. Kenny is, uh, the reason I called him up, Kenny is highly trained in the martial arts. He's been doing it since he was really young. That was the way he controlled his temper. That was the way that he was able to control things. I've seen six men surround him in a circle in a small area. They all attack at the same time. Nobody can touch him. He puts them in line. He's tough as far as that goes. He knows what he's doing. I don't remember what, what degree we lined up. Okay. Oh, anyway. And he studied the old Chinese art of Kung Fu. The Steven Seagal type, I think, and the, the what was the other one? Yeah, all the other. And he knows how to handle somebody if they came at him. Now, please don't hit me, please. <laughs> so, if I'm coming at him, and I'm going to hurt him, and I throw a punch at him, what is he going to do? That's not what's going to happen. Yeah. He's just going to move. And if I try to do it, it ain't going to happen. I've seen men come up behind him and try to do this and take no easy, 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 easy. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. You see what just happened there? <laughs> but it'd be faster motion than that. You're rough. I get it. He's extra fast. But he knows what he's doing. He knows how to defend himself. How did he get there? Okay. God, you look better, man. Get this <laughs> but how did he get there? Years and years of studying, discipline, being under control. I remember one year I was working out with him back here in the back, and I didn't know what I who wanted me to do, and I had to do a five-minute course stance. I said, I'll be awful. I said, I'm here, you're in my class. Now, horse dance hurts. But for five minutes, I can stay in that horse dance. I said, I'm going to get you a bald head, you know? But for me to learn something, I had to be disciplined. Stay with me. For me to learn how to listen to the Lord, I have to discipline myself. That's right. I have to get to the point where I say, okay, God, here I am. God, teach me how to wait. And I worked out with Kenny for a few years, and I told him, teach me. Show me some things. And to help me, but I had to listen. I had to be respectful. The same thing with the Word of God. If I want to learn, i got to wait upon the Lord and let Him help me. And listen, God can help you today, amen? Yes. Come on, how many pray for that blessing? Come on, you pray for that blessing? It's hard. All you got to do is just reach out and grab it. It might not come as quick as you think, but wait and watch what God does. I don't know what you're facing right now or what your need might be. Instead of me bringing you along, this is what I want you to do this morning. I want you to be
begin to think about that circumstances in your life. That problem you might be going through right now. As they begin to sing that song, I want you to say, Lord, teach me. Teach me to wait. Because the blessings are there for you. Go ahead, Shane. He will never give us anything more than what we can 